Welcome to the basement. Today we'll be discussing the perineal layers. You will find several layers in the perineum. First, the perineal skin. Next, subcutaneous fat. Next, superficial collies fascia. Deep to that, you'll find the deep perineal fascia, or gallaudet. Gallaudet invests just the superficial perineal muscles. A trapezoidal fibrous membrane covers the perineal area. This membrane is called the perineal membrane. To understand what lies within the perineal membrane, we'll draw a trapezoid on the board. This trapezoid will be divided in half to indicate the anal fossa and the UG triangle. Boundaries of the, the ischioanal fossa are as follows. The roof is the pelvic diaphragm. The floor is the perineal skin. Laterally, the ischium overlaid by the obturator internus and posteriorly, the sacrotuberous ligament and the gluteus maximus muscle. Still got blue. Very nice. Very nice. Within this, within this anal triangle, you'll have several important arteries and nerves. Namely, the internal pudendal vessels and pudendal nerve, as well as the inferior rectal artery and nerve. I thought a spider was crawling up my leg. Turns out it was my sock. We get a lot of spiders down here in the basement. In the basement. And socks too. That's right. That's right. The UG triangle is, is t there are two potential spaces within the UG triangle. First, the superficial perineal space. Second, the deep perineal space. Within the superficial space, you'll find the perineal muscles, the urethra, arteries and nerves, and in the male, the root of the penis. In the female, you'll find the clitoris, vestibular bulbs, vagina, and vestibular glands. Within the deep par this deep potential space, you'll find two further items. In the males, you'll find the bulbo-urethral glands. In females, the vagina. The vagine. We're going to look in more detail now at the female UG triangle. As we've learned, there are, is a clear rule of threes that will guide us through the UG triangle. The UG triangle is bound laterally by two pairs of muscles. These muscles being the ischiocavernosus muscles. One pair, anyway. One pair. Beneath, uh, posteriorly, you'll find the transverse perineal muscles. First the superficial, then the deep, both beneath that. Within the triangle, you find three, three important features in the females. First, the clitoris. Gabe knows right where that is. Always know Second, where the external urethral orifice. Third, the vagina. These are bound uh, by a by a single muscle. That connects to the perineal body. P body. P body. Lateral to this, you'll find the Vestibular glands and body. Glands, bodies, and it's important. Bulbs, 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 bodies. Bulbs, bodies. It's important to note that the on this diagram we do not see the labia majoris, labia minoris, which 
nor the mons pubis. Mons pubis. Mons pubis. Yeah, mon. We'll also find that in this space, the perineal layers continue to flow through. Gabe will now mark the where we might find the Collie's fascia external to the triangle. Also covering it. Oh, I don't think it covers any of them. <laughs> I think this is still open. Pretty sure. There you go. There you go. Not that center part. We'll find deep to that the perineal membrane and only over the uh, superficial muscles we find the Gallaudet fossa, Gallaudet's fascia. Thank you for playing. Today we're talking about the penis. Our penis here is demonstrated by this cucumber, barbecue skewer, and various layers of plastic. This penis is a little small in anatomical terms, but will suffice for today's demonstration. Uh, the most superficial layer of the penis in terms of fascia is the skin, represented by this rubber glove. Deep to that we have the superficial penile fascia, represented by the saran wrap, which is continuous with Darto's fascia of the scrotum. Finally, we have the deep or box fascia of the penis, which is represented by the skin of the cucumber here. And this is continuous with Gallaudet's fascia in the perineum. Uh, general regions of the penis, most superiorly we have the glands penis. Uh, secondary to that is the body or shaft of the penis. And finally, we have the root of the penis, which splits into three parts, the bulb and the two crura splitting laterally. Uh, ligaments. Supporting the penis uh, include the fundiform ligament of the penis, which arises from the linea alba of the abdominal wall, and deep to that is the suspensory ligament of the penis, arising from the pubic symphysis and supporting most of the weight of the penis. Uh, in terms of vessels, most superficially along the dorsum of the penis is the superficial dorsal vein, which is deep to the, no not that deep, it's deep to the superficial fascia, but superficial to the deep fascia. Very good, yes. And if we were to peel away that deep fascia then, we would find the deep dorsal vein, which is a biggie, and uh, on both sides of it we would find uh, dorsal deep, we would find dorsal penile arteries, which arise from the internal pudendal arteries. Lateral to those arteries we would find dorsal penile nerves arising from the pudendal nerves. Uh, we might also demonstrate the external urethral orifice, which is where our barbecue skewer is coming from here, which goes all the way down the length of the penis through the corpus spongiosum. Uh, here's the corpus spongiosum now. Uh, in addition to the corpus spongiosum, the length of the penis uh, has two other erectile tissues, uh, which are the corpora cavernosa, uh, one left and one right, which are surrounded by tunica albuginea layers which meet in the middle to form a penile septum. Um, finally, we should discuss the bulbospongiosis muscle, here represented by wax paper, which surrounds the root of the penis, uh, and also two ischiocavernosis muscles, which would cover laterally the uh, crura of the penis. Uh, finally, the bulbourethral or cowper's glands are in the deep perineum, and their ducts empty um, lubricants into the penis during copulation. This concludes our discussion of the penis.